Hello, welcome back to Greenhill Junction. Uh, this video we're back on the station side of the layout as I'm going to be um, starting and hopefully getting a fair bit of the scenic work done uh, up along here, so between the upper level and uh, the tracks where the hush hush are, hush hush is. Um, and I've kind of started it just now, but um, just very quickly. And uh, I've started doing the um, the, w the end of the wall there, uh, and that's just some grey board. Uh, it's about three four mil thick, so I've cut two, and I had to cut out a little notch at the bottom so it fits in tight against the the station wall. And then it's just going to fall down to, uh, and I'll build a wee pillar there. Can't remember what they're called. You know, the wee pillars at the end of the end of the walls. Um, to finish that off and then this will be filled in with some uh, just a slope down and then the slope will fall past this and basically it'll be a kind of slope all the way to fill in this gap to the tunnel portal and uh, what else have I been up to ah um, I have filled in this corner uh, a couple of videos ago maybe more than that um, I'd asked what could I put in there and I think it was Kev from Medway Peninsula that said what about a wee signal box so that's exactly what I did uh, that is the Metcalf small signal box I'm quite a fan of the Metcalf kits uh, I think they're really nice they're re really quite cheap as well and um, they're they're fun to build with quite a bit of detail um, so I've put that in there uh, and now I've just filled this corner in with um, a mix of ballast and scatters and a bit of soil and um, some bushes to just try and marry in the scene to the back scene. Um, stuck the signal down and there's also a little um, cork path. Well, it's cork dust, but it's meant to be a kind of scrub path to the to the um, signal box. So I think that um, that finishes that corner quite nicely. Simple, simple job, but um, I think it makes that corner look quite good. Did think about putting some fencing in, either sort of coming out there or even boxing that in, but I wasn't sure um, if, like in the days of steam, there would be that sort of health and safety of needing a fence around it. Uh, let me know what you think. I have prepared some fence for it because I was going to do it, and then I thought, eh, no, I'm not going to do it. So um, let me know if you think that needs a fence around it or not. Other thing I have done is some accidental on purpose vandalism to the hush hush. So you'll remember when I first got this uh, and I ran it round and it, I couldn't run it on any of the lower tracks because um, it kept on rubbing against all the platforms and I certainly wasn't going to redo that big station just for one local. Um, so first of all, I hadn't done the top station at the time so I designed that to let the hush hush run on both tracks. Now, a wee while ago I brought the hush hush down um, down the incline which comes out there and to just bring it into there to get it out of the way and the issue with it was that the stairs that were close to the front of the local were catching on the platform and the jewel caught on that platform and fell off and I was like great I have just damaged a very expensive model however what I found out was that the steps were a separately fitted detail and they basically slotted into a tiny little groove and were held on by a tiny little spot of glue so the steps were, I think they were there. Um, so all I did was went round uh, the other side of the local, um, gave the steps a wiggle and the jewelry came away. And um, now the hush hush runs around all my tracks because everything else is, I suppose, what you call standard dimensions. For whatever reason, those steps were sticking out a little bit further. And I know a lot of people have had issues with that. So, But if I didn't tell you that the steps missing, you wouldn't know. Um, so it really doesn't make any difference apart from now I can run it on all my tracks which I'm rather pleased about um, so I'll get on with this um, I've got the ballast in there as well because I want to ballast those two tracks and those two tracks before any of the scenic work gets done because I just don't want to be spraying water and glue about um, so ballasting is the first job getting that wall done and we'll kind of work on the portal and the back scenes as well and hopefully everything comes together and, and I'll um, just do videos periodically as I work along when there's um, when there's something to show. All right, so back in a bit. Okay, welcome back. Uh, things have progressed a little bit. Uh, we've got all the tracks this side now ballasted uh, right up to the bridges uh, and the 
tunnel portals been primed in grey and I have uh, completed this this wall here um, to kind of finish off the the station wall. Um, so this is uh, this is just a couple of bits of grey board. Take it out. A couple of bits. Uh, I think it's three or four mil grey board stuck together. Um, the Metcalf grey brick paper. Metcalf paving stones on top, and then these are two spare pillars from those wall packs. Um, so that's a full size one that I've just cut a little bit out of and recessed onto the wall uh, to make it look like part of the wall because the whole the whole thing on its own was just it was too big it needed something to break it up and then that's um, probably about must be about just going on a half of the pillar just to finish off the end there um, and it's been papered on the back but not all the way down because there's going to be landscape on so. I've not stuck that in yet because I've still to decide what the uh, the hill is going to look like and what shape it's going to take. But I'll sit in there like that um, and it'll give quite a nice finish to the, the station. If you just, if you think that that's going to be, this bit here is obviously going to be all filled in. So that'll, uh, that'll kind of finish that area off. Alright, welcome back. Uh, tunnel portal didn't really go to plan. Well, it didn't, it didn't. It was a good wee experiment and I tried out some techniques that I'd seen on YouTube and they did work. So um, I, it went in this kind of like really ready brown colour, uh, which wasn't what I was going for at all. And then I couldn't actually get rid of it to create a different colour. Um, however, using a, a sort of mortar wash, I think all I did was th uh, use that white paint and maybe a little bit of water and just washed it on or painted it on and then wiped it off with some kitchen towel so that certainly worked you can see that i got essentially what looks like a mortar in between the bricks but um it's completely the wrong color um, and no matter what i do i can't change the color and i also did a wee bit of um like what you call it weather and blackening, whatever you want, which worked quite well too. Um, but I've decided to just scrap that because it was probably going to be a bit of a squeeze getting it in there. Um, and I just don't think it was going to work. So the new plan is I've got these um, little bridge girder sidey things. And I'm going to stick them together to create a double level because I just, I just thought one was one was too small um, if I hold it against a, a loco if I come over here so I thought one was maybe too low um, but if I put two together very roughly I thought that looked a little bit better so the new plan is to if I just take one of these now is to kind of run a, a bridge side across kind of there and build a frame using the using the grey board and then the gap will just get filled in um, and I've got I looked around for like a, a different brick from the grey and the, really the best I could find was this um, the Metcalf stuff so I'm going to use the Metcalf red brick for this sort of portals and walls um, but right now I'm just working along um, to fill in this landscape probably about to those wires uh, and then I can do the bridge uh, as usual doing it cheap and cheerful so all I've got is um, a bit of card not even that thick card not much thicker than decent paper um, and I've cut a triangle off to start it to fit that space couple of tabs folded in and then it's just a real simple case of going that into place to fill in that gap um, and I'll just keep on doing that along here uh, like I say probably to around about those wires and then I'll need to put the bridge in to figure out where the rest of the, rest of the landscape goes but no need for all this expensive plaster cast and well, what's the stuff that you see everyone using um, sculptor mould and things like that a bit of paper that's all you need um, 
And once I've stuck that down, I'll probably give it a paint with um, just PVA, uh, which will harden it up. And then I can just go right onto that to do the scenery, or I could even do some paper mache over it to thicken it up and toughen it up. Um, you know, all you need is paper and PVA glue, uh, and then after that, paint and scenic materials. Really, in my opinion, you don't need to spend all this money on expensive um, sculpt and mould and and things like that. Just just use the stuff you got: paper, PVA glue, paint, and your scatters. So, I'm going to get on with doing this, and then we'll move on to the challenge of the uh, the portal slash bridge. Right, we've got more progress, um, getting the embankment filled in. Uh, went with the paper mache, uh, it's literally just been put on. It's not really even paper mache, it's strips of newspaper that have been soaked in a PVA water mix, probably about 60 40 in favour of the PVA. Um, and all I've got to support it is strips of the same card that I made the triangle out of there, and they're just periodically placed, or well, stuck to both the upper and the, the lower level boards along and then just take your newspaper, the cheapest, nastiest newspaper that you can find um, there's quite a few of them in the British press currently so take your pick uh, and then it's a case of soak it in um, the PVA mix which is in there as you can see it's quite liquidy soak it in that, drain off the excess and then simply place it horizontally to cover the gaps and that'll dry uh, hard as a rock and it'll be ready for painting and you can see already how much better that looks with that, that embankment filled in. Okay, welcome back. Uh, now on to plan C for this bridge. Uh, so I decided not to use these because if it will focus in on them, because uh, they're 3D cut, you can see just in the middle there between my my ring finger and my pinky when it focuses, there's like loads of little hairs on it, tiny little bits of plastic, uh, which I thought, well, I tried to get them off and try to cut them off where a scalpel was a nightmare, brushing them off really didn't work. And I thought, well, when I paint these, the paint's going to get caught on them and it's, it's just going to look terrible. So these are not getting used. Um, and what I got was um, I got the... I went to scale model scenery because I quite like the laser cut stuff and I got the girder set 4 uh, which is basically two bits of laser cut girders like that and you can see they're they're quite a bit bigger than uh, the the plastic ones and they actually look they look better um, so started a wee bit of construction uh, so got the female grey board again and what I'm wanting to do is is just have like a, a sort of straight through where it just disappears so I'm not going to bring those that wing wall out mainly because I can't bring that wing wall out, it's so tight there so I thought if I have one at an angle and one straight it's just going to look daft um, so I'm going to have um, a sort of straight through wing wall obviously that one is going to be straight and then I've I got these eye beams, these plastic eye beams, ages ago for something, and it didn't work out. Um, but I remember I had them, so they're um, these bulk scene model plastic profiles, Goodwood Scenics. I say I got these years ago, um, and they've just been kicking about. So the plan is to have um, the two walls uh, with an eye beam. Um, across the the eye beams only go, go as far as there. I've just got it leaning on that to sort of hold this all together just now. And then the girder will be stuck on top. And yeah, so that's pretty much what it'll look like. And all the bit behind the girder, i.e. in here, will be filled in machinery so you'll not see the tracks below. So um what I've done we just take this apart. Is I've just cut a little nick in the grey board so that the um, the eye beam just basically is, is housed. Come on, stop focusing on my hand. Is like housed like that in there, so it'll all sit quite nicely together. Um, and eventually, once it's a more more solid structure, it'll um, 
it'll, well, it'll be a solid structure and it, it should just stay there. So that's that's where we're at just now. These are going to be double skinned as well. Again, there's the, the outer skin's not going to have a little notch cut into it just to keep the eye beam in place. Um, so I need to cut some more bits of that. In regards to the paper mache, rock solid. So um, that's all good. Um, this is slightly out. I did originally have the girder back here, but then it would be an absolute fit. I'll just move it back. So I'll move that back to there. Just to try and get an embankment coming down there, it would just be, well, impossible to be honest. It wouldn't look that good. So I'm bringing the bridge forward a little bit. Stay. Um, just so I've got this sort of area where I can then bring an embankment down and you know this will all join up into there. Yeah, so that's the that's the cunning plan so far and it seems to be working. So um get some more bits cut, some stuff stuck together and uh, see where we go for there. Alright, back in a bit. Alright, welcome back. That's the uh, basic engineering done for the tunnel entrance. Um so stuck or cut down the, the girder from that size uh, down to that's about 15 and a half centimeters um, it was just whatever fit to get an even amount of squares um, and then it's stuck to the plastic i-beam uh, with gorilla wood glue because gorilla wood glue apparently pick, uh, sticks everything and then there's just a wee cap there um, that is basically to keep it all square because um, the girder wasn't enough to sort of support the whole structure and um, that will allow these two bits to slide far enough under the, the upper level um, to basically put that in, in the right position for things to pass through it and then get round the corner which is going to be behind it uh, hence the reason for the coach in there, just to make sure everyone's, um, everyone's clearing. Um, so I'm going to uh, brick paper the two sides. I'll probably brick paper the underside of that, just in case the, the grey can be seen. Uh, and then I'll not quite decide if I'm going to prime that or not, or just try and paint it. And I've not decided what colour I'm going to paint it yet either. Um, but I need to get the brick paper and done before I actually stick this together. This is just balanced uh, on the board just now. Um, so I'll get brick paper in and um, hopefully um, while I'm doing that I'll decide what colour um, to do the, um, the side. Alright, so back in a bit. Alright, welcome back. Things have moved on a wee bit again. Got all the brick paper on. Um, don't worry about this bit not being covered. There's going to be hillside coming from there or some sort of landscaping coming from there right up to the the girder and then and then down towards this track so there's no need to put any paper on that and I've just brought that paper back and uh, you know just to make doubly sure that whatever comes down here you know uh, meets the the brick and not the bare card uh, I've put the Metcalf paving stones on this on the slopes um, as captain stones like I usually do and it's it's starting to look a bit more tunnel bridge like. Again, the, the bit in the corner there, I'm mean, two minds whether I chop that off or not. Um, basically, because the card, the brick paper didn't go that far, but I think by the time I get everyone built around it, you'll probably not see that. Um, in regards to the girder, I have made a wee adjustment to it. I just felt the wood was a bit too skinny on its own. Didn't really look robust enough to be the, the sort of girder for the the bridge or the tunnel. So I had some um, of the Wills kit plastic girders left um, from when I built the the big blue bridge over the over the middle, um, and I've just stuck them on, and they've got a nice wee rivet detail on them. And just boxes that in, and I think that makes it look a bit better. Uh, I am going to prime that. Um, so it's all the one colour and the one sort of surface before I paint it. And painting wise, I have decided to just do it the one colour. And I've found this uh, crimson red acrylic paint. Um, so I'm going to use that. Um, and it roughly turns out like uh, that one there. 
That one was meant to be a bright red, there's not a lot of difference, I just prefer the crimson red. Also looks a bit dirtier as well, so um, no need to do any black washing or that to it. And once that's, basically once that's primed and painted, um, that'll get stuck in place. We'll continue the, or fill in that gap there, um, and start bringing the slope up to there and then down towards the bottom tracks. Um, so yeah. It's going quite well so far. Um, I'll crack on and uh, get some more done. Okay, things have moved on quite a bit. Uh, we've now got the tunnel in place uh, and I've started doing the, the scenery around it. Uh, so I just thought I'd show you this stage to show how the, the sort of paper thing works. It doesn't have to be super neat. You're just sort of doing a rough template with the, the paper and then the newspaper strips will you know, smooth it all out and give you your, your whole landscape. So over here, I've just continued with the paper strips and then I cut a triangle to fill in that gap. Um, and it's, you can see the, the slope there. Um, and then over here, I've got the bigger sheets. So there's a gentle slope going from the top of there up to there. Again, this is all a gentle slope coming down. I'm thinking maybe have some trees and bushes there just to give the scenery a bit more dimension rather than just have it all uh, sort of grassed over and then as it gets steeper here back to the the um, strips of paper to fill in all that so again if I come around there it gives quite a nice nice profile around that corner don't need to worry about that gap because again it's all going to get covered with paper so it comes down there and I didn't just want it to end there so if I bring you down here um, I've continued with a kind of mound so as if that, you know, that this has all been cutting, but they left that, they only cut what they needed to cut away. So that goes down and just tapers off there. And again, I've continued that into the tunnel. And it tapers off at the back there. And the girder's all painted. So it's painted, um, I can't change the plan again. And it's crimson in the middle with um, all the girders round, framing it are black, along with the bottom girder. Not entirely sure that goes with the red brick, but I like the colour scheme, so I went with it. Um, so, yeah, again, cheap, readily available materials, paper, thin card, whatever you've got, and PVA, just cut up and stuck on to make your landscape. Um, as I said, you don't need all this this plaster cast. Um, like people are using what I call king span, you know, the insulation that you put in your in your walls in your house. Just, just use paper, that's all you need. Um, so the next job is to do the, the sort of newspaper paper mache, like this bit, um, to, and that smooths out all the landscape and, and gives you your sort of finished product, uh, and then it'll all get painted brown. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that all, the, basically this is all filled in, all the way down here. And the, um, the signal box is gonna sit there, um, because that sitting there, means there's enough space for everything to pass it. Um, so I figured that would look all right there because like most of the points are there. Right, there we go. Basic landscaping done. Uh, all the paper mache is down and it's solid. Um, so that's essentially what it's going to look like. And I'm really liking the, the profile here. Yeah, I think that's going to look great, seeing trains sweeping over there and then other ones disappearing in there, giving the illusion essentially that that lighting's going somewhere else, which is, I suppose is all you can do in a relatively small way out like this, is um, create optical illusions like that, um, just to create some, some variation from the, the inevitable loops. Um, so now it's just a case of getting some scenic work done, which I'll work my way through. Neighbours are busy doing some DIY. Um, so, uh, first things first, get all this painted brown. Um, and then I'll go about creating some soil uh, effects on it. And then the, the static grass, bushes, trees and all that. I want it to look, I want it to obviously go from the sort of urban built up area and then gradually become grassy, tree, more rural, um, and we'll just see how that develops. Uh, the one thing is, 
Um, not sure what to do here. I think I'm going to end up just putting in some sort of wall from that bridge down to that bridge just to finish that off. Um, there's not really much else I can do there, I don't think. So, um, yeah, let's go on with the fun stuff of making this look more like a landscape now. Hey, uh, welcome back. Uh, that's the the base cover done. Just a brown all the way over it. Um, one thing I would say is, as much as this Hobbycraft Ready Mix paint is um, cheap and it is, it is good, it's quite thin. Um, so it's taken two, sometimes three coats in some places to cover up the newsprint. Um, so maybe I would have been better, certainly uh, time wise, to get a thicker brown paint to do that. But um, you know what, I did the job and it, it wasn't exactly a, a long period of time it took just to slap on brown paint. Um, so now uh, it's on to the coverings. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the ballast, but ballast mixed with some turf, kind of filling in this area just beyond the, beyond the signal box. And then it's going to be much more, um, much more sort of, grasses and trees and bushes and um, so the base where I'm going to put on first of all is I don't need that paint that can get out of the way um, is essentially this stuff so I've got my ballast and um, fine turf uh, soil and fine turf earth and um, some coarse turf and uh, this is actually some soil from the garden that I've sifted um, and then I've got a mix here of ballast and the uh, the coarse turf um, that I put down as well. So quite simply just a case of PVA and as I go along with the whole surface and then I'll just randomly scatter the stuff because nature's random so there's no point in um, I think being particular about where stuff goes um, and this is all just to get a, a base down so like if the, I decide that I don't want the static grass in certain bits there's not just brown paint underneath there's um, you know there's something that looks like like soil um, so I'll crack on with that and I'll show you what I've got once the sort of base layer is down. Right, hey, things have moved on quite a bit. Got some scenery done. Um, this bit over here, uh, so this is the kind of basic that I start out with, where I've just stuck on um, the fine turf soil, fine turf earth, and some scatter, and then I've Kind of extended the the ballast out with a mix of ballast and fine turf just to kind of blend it all in. Um, it's looking a lot worse on the camera, uh, or depending on what way the light's coming in, but you can see it's quite shiny. That's because of the PVA, um, and I'm not entirely sure what to do to kind of not necessarily cover up these brown bits, but do something with them because it is it's quite a steep embankment. Um, See more that way, um, so you, there wouldn't necessarily be a lot of grass on it. I'll probably grass down here, um, and the same down here, um, but kind of use the middle bit. I'd, I've heard people mentioning using matte varnish just to take off that um, that shine. Um, I've seen those like spray bottles of it. Can anyone give me some advice? Um, can you just spray matte varnish on everything apart from the track, obviously? Or do you need to be kind of selective where you spray it? Uh, so, uh, give us a wee comment about that. Moving on to the other bit. Um, so this is um, this started off exactly the same. I've extended the the ballast and mixed in some um, scatter again, and then kind of thickened up the scatter. This has also had static grass. This has had four mil static grass. And there's some, I think it's actually 10 or 12 mil, the longer stuff, which doesn't really static that well, but I think it makes a nice kind of um, kind of rough hillside, uh, like an unkempt hillside. Uh, and then I have uh, kind of filled in there with some bushes. And over this side, again, I had the problem with a really steep embankment. So what I've done is I have this, this stuff. Um, it's basically like little dried up fern stuff that I got from my garden centre and all I've done is crush that up, stuck it on the hillside and then what I do is I spray it with hairspray and then I scatter fine turf on it and then um, scatter some of this stuff 
uh, funny enough, uh, scatter. So there's a multicolored one and a green one to make it look like a sort of bramble, like overgrown embankment. And then the idea is that this is going to come down here and finish off. And then I've got um, the armatures of seafoam. And the plan being that the reason that is ending there is there's basically going to be a whole of the trees here to wood, wood that up a bit, make it look wooded. And then I'm going to have some bushes, random fairly large bushes there to try and make a good split between the two lines as if they're only just coming together at the station. Uh, again, to add to that optical illusion of uh, of the stuff going through the tunnel and leaving somewhere else. Um, so that's what I'm going to go on with. Make the trees, make the bushes, um, finish off that bit and try and figure out what to do with that so it's not so shiny. Um, Alright, I've filled in all this. Again, just um, ballast and bushes and things like that um, just to fill in that gap. But yeah, apart from the shininess, it's uh, it's coming on quite nice. Um, so I'll, I'll crack on everything else and um, probably the next video will be uh, all finished. So back in a bit. Alright, welcome back. That's this scenic section done. Um, so from the last video, I've, uh, I've added uh, basically a row of bushes, hedgerow along there. Um, because what I found was I had a really sharp edge. Um, just where the, basically the slope met the upper level and it, it, oh, it just looked rubbish. Um, so the only way I could figure of covering that up is to do this kind of gorse hedge along the edge there, uh, which looks good from up there. Um, here, I mean, I suppose I was kind of like, I wasn't that neat about it because I thought, well, if it's growing, in real life, growing up there, it'll probably start growing down and falling down and things like that. So I just kind of went a bit ham and just stuck it on. And um, yeah, it looks, I think it looks all right. Um, and there's bits like, you know, there's, um, so I'll add in a link to how I make these gorse, bu gorse bushes. Um, I've done that in a previous video, but I mean, there's bits of the, the crayon that I use for the yellow flowers falling down, but then that would happen in real life, wouldn't it? And there's there's bits that have fallen off this this ferny stuff on the hillside, and I just you know I just left that in place and stuck it in with some scenic cement. I actually bought some of the woodland scenic, scenic cement. It's essentially just watered down PVA to my um, expensive watered down PVA, but it does a job. Um, so that's that embankment there. Which, uh, aye, apart from the shininess, I'm quite pleased with it to be honest. Get filled in with bushes and things here. There's more static grass here. Again, there's a lot of the 10, 12 mil stuff because um, I just like that it doesn't stand upright completely. So it just makes it look uh, like uncared for, which is what I was going for. Come to the middle. So coming out of the station, filled in the ballast, put in some scatters. Um, signal box has finally got home. I may run some, just some like fishing wire, but paint it black and sort of run it out and kind of connect, well, not connect it up, it's just maybe connect, connect. What else can you say? Connect up to those points, but not connect up to those points just to make it look like it's got some, um, uh, it's not cable trunking, but you know what I mean. Um, there's a connection between the signal box and the, and the landscape, but um, I'll think about that. Uh, coming along here so I added um, bushes but these are just green bushes there's no flowers on them I didn't want everyone to look like the same um, so that adds a really nice separation between the four lines um, like I said in the previous clip just makes it look like they're split and one's going off somewhere else and just adds a bit of height and breaks up that that embankment there Coming around here, um, we've got the sea foam trees. Uh, again, I'll leave a link in the in the top right hand corner of the video I made uh, previously on these. Really easy to do, really cheap to do, and um, really good fun to do. To be honest, um, it's amazing how quick a bit of sea foam changes into a tree. Um, I may add a few more. I'll see how it looks. 
obviously there's going to be a back scene there which is going to enhance the scene because you're not going to see all this um, I've still to decide exactly what I'm, what I'm doing back scene wise and where it's going uh, come around to here uh, we've got the this sort of scrubby steep hillside and I've put um, some it was a kind of purpley blue crayon um, onto it created the crayon up um, to try and create uh, basically either a bud layer or a heather hillside um, there which has turned out alright I quite like that that's when I like the way it fades away uh, into the forest and if you look down that way from the bridges yeah, that's quite effective. That'll make quite a nice shot. You'll have trains coming towards you and then trains coming out from there and vice versa. So, yeah, the, the, the optical illusion is, is going to work, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's just finished. It's been uh, it's been quite a task. Enjoyable task. I like this bit of model railways. I like creating the landscape. Um, probably just as much as laying down the track I like then creating the landscape um, so I'm quite pleased with this we'll get some running shots of trains going round it, going through it um, and uh, and that'll be that and I'll move on to the next project which is going to have to be what's happening behind um, I do have an idea for what's happening in the foreground but I don't want to do that and then have to reach over and do the back it's bad enough that I've put these trees in and now I'm going to have to reach over them so I'm going to do behind the upper level on this side uh, next so um thanks very much for watching um, i appreciate there's there's a fair gap between my videos but i want to do videos where there's something to show i'm i'm sorry but i don't like videos where you you put them on uh, and the first thing you say is oh here's my update and i've not done very much I, I just it's like what's the point so i'd rather take the time to do a big project like this and have something to show in a 20 30 minute video um, so that's why there's a gap I'm on no timetable for this I do it when I can uh, and then when I've got something done I'll uh, I'll publish a video with it all so uh, let me know what you think of all this uh, leave me any comments you have I generally enjoy reading them and I will reply to them all um, give me any suggestions you have to try and dull down the shininess along here um, and thanks very much for watching thanks very much for sticking with me and um, I'll speak to you again soon in, uh, in the next video so cheers, bye